Hey, what's up? This is ASICS here. Pretty big news in the world of techware, or the world of acronym at least, in that they've just announced and just released three different pairs of sunglasses. The most popular pair, certainly my favourite, was Type C. They sold out pretty much immediately, but they came with these translucent frames, they have gold lenses, they have these clip on elements as well. So there's a lot going on, there's quite a lot of cool stuff in these to like. Uh, maybe what's not to like though is the price, because these things were coming in at $800. But it got me thinking, these are pretty cool, pretty futuristic looking sunglasses, but of course they're not going to be the be all and end all, they're certainly not the only option for sunglasses out there, nor are they even the only option for futuristic sunglasses on the market. This is a topic that I've wanted to focus on for a while, but the acronym release really bumped it up to the top of the list, so you gotta thank Erlson for this video, and I have to shout out the Techware Discord as well actually, because I did ask about glasses of this type, and they gave me loads of cool suggestions, and I wasn't specifically asking because of making this video, but there were too many good suggestions I thought in there to ignore. So I happen to have a pair here, something that I just picked up, they're a little bit crazy, I told you guys I was gonna pick up some weird things, so we'll talk about those first, and then a whole bunch of other options as well at all kinds of different Different price points and some different futuristic styles too. So here we go. We have right here a pair of Balenciaga ski glasses. And I know what you're thinking, these things are pretty crazy, and I certainly do agree with you. They look a little bit ridiculous, but I also think they're pretty cool as well. So I ended up picking them up for that reason. And I feel like they're gonna be quite unusual in that your average Balenciaga buyer is probably not gonna pick something up like this because they're not massively heavily branded. I don't really think they fit in with a lot of other Balenciaga or kind of like hype beastie flexing wealth type clothes. But being Balenciaga, they're not really gonna be on the radar of a lot of techwear enthusiasts either. So they kind of sit in a bit of a weird in-between space. And I feel like a lot of people might not really have seen or have heard of these particular sunglasses. So um, I wanted to pick them up partly for that reason as well, because I did think that they were cool, they're unusual, um, and they do have that luxury status without being as logo heavy as Balenciaga stuff does tend to be. They do have a logo in the center and like on the insides, Oh no, they do have it on the outside as well, actually. They're very narrow, they're very flat, they're very visor-like. I think they have a little bit of an intimidating sort of look about them almost. Kind of reminds me of like, I don't know, this is something the cyber police would wear and they're about to bust your door down. <coughs> Alert, you have been caught watching hentai. <coughs> They do make my forehead look a little bit big though because I'm used to having things that are a lot wider so that'll take a little bit of getting used to. And I also wish that the arms were longer as well because I have quite a big distance apparently between ear and eye I suppose. I've just, I've got a big head basically. But apart from that I think they're pretty good and I think I'll enjoy wearing these in some weirder or more interesting futuristic outfits. I came across a super cheap visor type thing on ASOS as well which I thought was worth mentioning. Again, super futuristic vibes. This is like something that, I don't know, a utopian lab technician would wear or something. So if that's your techwear niche, then boy oh boy have I got the glasses for you. Only problem though, are they really sunglasses though ASOS? Really, these things are basically totally clear. They're not gonna protect you from anything, so uh, yeah, cloudy use, I guess. But if you wanna wear a lab coat, carry trays of bacteria around or something, then these are gonna be the perfect accessory. Probably the most well-known manufacturer for sports style sunglasses is Oakley. And for me, the coolest models are the Jawbreaker and the Radar. Um, and I think those are probably the most outrageous models from Oakley's lineup as well. Both of which, very futuristic. They've got that single visor-like lens, so if you're Sonic the Hedgehog cosplay, gonna be perfect for that. And the frame is both sporty and futuristic as well. This doesn't really look like just a fashion item. It looks like something that's gonna give you good performance as well. And indeed, something like this is designed for sporting use, like cycling in particular, for example. So so they do have legitimate techwear credentials, and I'd say if you are going to spend £100 plus on a pair of sunglasses, you want them to actually do things besides just looking cool, then you certainly can't go wrong with a brand like Oakley. They have loads of customization options on their website as well, so you can have like different kinds of lenses, you can have polarized ones, different colors, you can change all the different colors of all the different bits, so you can either go like murdered out all black or some proper crazy colors. I kind of like the idea of having black frames and then like weird colored lenses, I think that looks kind of cool. But of course, you can do pretty much anything you want. That kind of style is Oakley's hallmark, and there are a whole bunch of models that they do that have that semi-futuristic sport-like look. But of course, whenever you have something like that, you will have imitators as well. And you can go on Amazon and you can search like sportswear glasses or sport sunglasses or something like that. As you probably can on Google, to be honest, you'll find a whole bunch of different retailers. But yeah, Amazon, if you do exactly that, you'll find a whole bunch of like 
Oakley copycat type things. Obviously I can't vouch for the quality of a product like that, but if you wanna experiment with that kind of style, but you don't wanna drop a hundred quid plus, then you could just look at doing something like that, to be honest. Just pay attention to like UV ratings and stuff like that. Don't accidentally buy something that's gonna destroy your retinas the second you put them on. Cause yeah, disclaimer, I'm not paying you medical bills. And I certainly don't think that any of the models here beat the radar or the jawbreaker in terms of performance, but also in terms of cool futuristic style um, all these ones are a little bit more toned down. They follow the, the more kind of normal Oakley models, I suppose, but some of them do still look decent. Like Balenciaga, there are quite a few different brands which include futuristic glasses in their lineup. And one of those is Acne, which I didn't actually expect because they're associated very much with Scandinavian minimalism. But yet here we are with this very cool visor-like, really monolithic looking sunglasses with this really big mirrored lens. And I think it looks really great. What's not so great though is the price. These come in at 280 pounds, which is well over $300. And in fact, more expensive than the Balenciaga Version. Balenciaga, of course, associated very much with like high fashion, super expensive, uh, dare I say overpriced gear. But yeah, here we are, Balenciaga coming in £30 under Acne Studios. But I wanted to show these off anyway, because I think that they are particularly cool and it just shows as well not to restrict yourself, because even in those unexpected places, you'll find that there are some cool futuristic models in there. That said, there are a couple of specific sunglasses brands worth mentioning as well. One of those is Gentle Monster. They are a Korean brand and they come in with a whole bunch of different styles not all of them futuristic some of them are much more on the classic side of things some of them are pretty wild they've got like these darker stripes that go across the lenses which is a really interesting detail not something that a lot of glasses use some of these models have obviously futuristic looks without the same kind of practicality aspect or sporting aspect of a brand like Oakley it's much more on the fashion side of the spectrum so if your use case is much more just for kind of lifestyle use and you're thinking I'm never gonna go out on a bike or doing any kind of activities wearing them, then perhaps a brand like this is gonna be more up your street. Again, it's more towards the premium side of the scale, but for a nice pair of fashion-y sunglasses, it's always worth splashing out a little bit because you may find that this is something that you're gonna want to invest in, you're gonna keep these for many, many years and thus get a decent use out of them. There's one more brand that I wanna include here in the form of Percy Lau and I've left them until the end, not only because I think they're maybe a little bit more unusual, a bit more off the beaten track, I certainly hadn't heard of them until they were suggested in the Techwear Discord, but some of the shapes and some of the things that they come out with are very, very unusual and they're super distinct not all of them are futuristic, but they're playing with ideas of asymmetry, of using these really different and weird lens shapes and designs that you probably won't have seen anywhere else. One of my favorite pairs are these, which look a little bit like a pair of Clubmasters or something, I suppose, a very traditional style, but then they have this split in the middle of the lens and it kind of like shifts the whole thing. It looks like a weird glitch or something, which is quite interesting. No idea how that affects visibility, but there you go. I do think they look pretty cool. And I have to say with this brand, a lot of the sunglasses go past wearability and into pure fashion accessory. So this is really something if you're out there just to look good, you're not even going to wear these all day. You just put them on, you take some cool photos or whatever, you look super cool for a little bit and then you probably pack them away again because these things are super weird. But sometimes you do just want to be a little bit extra and buy something that is a massive statement piece and is going to make people stop and look at you regardless of what else you happen to be wearing. And Percy Lau seems like the brand that's going to enable you to do that. To be honest, even fast fashion retailers are worth having a look through, particularly if this is a style that you want to experiment with rather than invest in. Because yeah, of course, you're not gonna get the same quality or the same luxury feeling or whatever as if you're buying a pair of Prada sunglasses or Balenciaga or what have you, but something like 20 quid for this Zara pair. Sometimes that's exactly what you need, especially when you're trying out these new styles. So yeah, as I say, this Zara pair in particular, they kind of fit the bill for me. They've got like a much darker smoked out version and then they've got another kind of lab technician pair as well. I'm not, why are all these people suddenly coming out with clear sunglasses? I don't get it. Don't get me wrong, your science teacher's gonna love you, but they just look weird. They do not look like sunglasses. So those were some of my favorites. Let me know if you've come across any cool futuristic sunglasses on your travels especially if they're more at the budget end of the spectrum. I know I focused a little bit more on the luxury side of things this time, particularly with the Balenciaga ones that are down here, but 
yeah, it's just because I wanted to contrast with the acronym stuff, which do come in at such a high price that to be honest, anything compared to that is affordable. And sunglasses do just seem to be one of those things where the luxury brands focus on them much, much more than the lower end or the high street ones. But anyway, if you find anything cool, let me know. And do let me know as well, of course, if you had a particular favorite that was in this video. Um, if you like those Balenciaga ones, or if you think I'm a total idiot for buying them, I'm sure most of you are gonna think the latter. But as I say, I wanna pick up some weird stuff to show off to you guys and some things that are a little bit different and you might not see that often. So that was the reasoning behind that one. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, do please give it a like, it's super appreciated. And of course, as always, I will see you again in the next video. Shout out to Decrest for being much nicer about my outfits in the last video than I was. And shout out to Question Question. Although I'm probably not gonna do an Assassin's Creed cosplay video, it does actually raise a very interesting topic about the idea of tech wear as like, performance versus performative or like costume based clothing um, and I think that's an interesting discussion to have. So it's something I've been thinking about for a while and that idea might end up being the subject of a video at some point so keep your eyes peeled for that one. Thanks for making it all the way to the end of the video, hope you enjoyed the new background. Uh, I realize all I've done is like moved backwards a little bit and I've stood up but um, yeah, maybe you enjoy the change. Anyway, uh, if you want to catch some more stuff with the old background, then you can check up some videos that are going up there. And if you haven't subscribed yet, then of course there's going to be a little button off to the side. You can click that, you can be my best friend forever, and you can see all the new videos on Sundays, 6pm GMT. No, 6pm BST at the moment. Uh, but yeah, you can see them whenever they go up, because you get a little ding ding notification thing. And uh, yeah, that's cool. You're the kid that's been watching too much hentai.